Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast, brought to you by Fleet Farm. Miles, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? We are uh, here in the uh, Minneapolis area, Minneapolis St. Paul area, and we are at Tony J- Jaros, correct? The River Garden. The River Garden. What does the River Garden mean? Mississippi River is right there, dude. And there's probably a garden. Right That's what I mean. Somewhere. Yeah, it was yeah. where's the garden? I got the river part. Oh, yeah. I thought you yeah, were yeah. okay. Okay, did you really? I did. It, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh no! On the way over here, checked it out. River's high right now at the time of this. The recording. river is very high. At very the time high. Of this recording, mm-hmm. but I heard on the radio it's not high enough to warrant anybody wearing too much. Infrastructure should be able to handle it. Yep, that's what I also heard. But, but I probably heard it before you did. So did you? Yeah, I think I did. I, why does that always happen? Where are you getting your information from? I got a guy. I got a river cresting guy. Oh. Yeah. He usually has got, got a bead on what when a river is going to crest before usually everyone else. So Is his name Tom? Bill. Bill. Yeah. Shoot. So. I got to ask I Tom about I actually think Bill. that Tom is a, like, a dis, like, a on the same family tree as Bill in terms of cresting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like uh, Bill Belichick's, you know, coaching tree, all the coaches that used to coach with them. Tom's in Bill's coaching tree. I see. So Tom is lesser than Bill is what you're Well, I'm not saying me. that. It's just they're just different. Oh, you know? okay. So, um, yeah, I suggest everyone listening, you get a good river cresting guy so you know and you're prepared for any potential floods. You know what? I want someone like you have Jared. Like Jared's right there and he laughs at all your jokes and I've got no one. I've I got know. no one to laugh at my well, jokes. I'm looking right over there, just an empty bar stool. You know, I have to imagine ghosts laughing at my jokes, and you you get a nice audience right there. Yeah, I mean, I do pay him extra to make sure That's that true. he's, yeah. That's yeah, true. See, like, he's I'm, on your payroll, like, yeah. Every time he laughs, he's like, there's an extra 20 bucks in my pocket. And then every time I say something, he's stone-faced, it's 40. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yep. he's laughing. Out of your paycheck, That's what pal. we call in the biz, the plant. <laughs> Barons, <laughs> you would know that. I'm pretty sure everyone at your shows are plants. Oh, <laughs> please. That's why they call me Charlie the Gardener. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are in the River, river Garden. garden. Yeah. Uh, there we go. We found circle. it full circle. All right, Miles, let's quit snip snapping about it. We got a big issue to talk about <laughs> on <Monday>. Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah, it's Mother's Day. A big issue. That's a big issue. Yeah. Now, I met your mother. Yeah. Uh, many times. Not what you guys and, think. Relax, okay? Hey. Hey, hey. That's my mother. That is that is his mother you're all thinking about yeah. right now. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> what are you getting your mom for Mother's Day? Um, I'm going to get her whatever she wants. And if you're wondering what does she want, I will let you know on Saturday after I ask her. <laughs> 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 that, is that how you do it? Do you yeah. ask her? Well, actually, if I'm being honest, I've actually just, she will tell me stuff, but I just fall back and I don't remember. So I just fall back on the, oh, I wanted to get you something not on your list. Then you're not expecting it. It's way more fun. But in reality, I just don't remember the stuff she tells me. So. Did she explicitly tell you or does she like, she? how deep are these hints she's dropping? Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll be like, a, oh, maybe you could give me that for my birthday or Christmas, you know, stuff like okay, that. That's but not that, a hint. That's literally you. Yeah. Literally. But it's not like a buy this for my birthday. It's just like a, hey, like if you have a mental list going in your head. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Um, which I do not. Okay. <laughs> so, therefore, that's why she's got to be so explicit with it. Yeah. Because over the years, she's tried doing the subtle hints, and you just never picked up. On yeah. It. And now, even the just hitting me between the eyes with it doesn't even work. I gotta. Yeah. Um. So, what about you? What What's your plan? <sighs> Man, I don't know. Um, my mom just got me something real nice. She just got me a bird feeder with a camera on it. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. You it got is. anything good on it yet? No, I haven't set it up yet. I'm so, I'm gonna set it up. So uh, okay, that's so now not the, getting done in 2023. No, that, that I said will the get same done. thing about my house numbers. Yeah, but this is completely different. There's no there's no benefit to you setting up your house numbers. There's a huge benefit to me opening up my phone right now that and I, looking okay, at the birds on my porch. Does it give you a notification when there's a bird entering <laughs> the feeder? Or yeah. What? Oh my it god. Push notifications for birds, dude. That is actually the pretty problem sick. is 
squirrels are a big issue with it apparently my dad has one too and he told me you gotta grease up the the pole of the feeder or put a little slinky on it yeah or get a um scope and a bb gun and uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah rig it up so you can uh have a bb gun remotely aim at no whatever. no i wouldn't oh actually remotely oh that would be so you cool. could it'd be like like you're flying a drone you know <laughs> but just with the bb gun at home do you think the squirrels would like pick up on that like how long do you think it would take the squirrels to pick up on that because you have skittish deer when you're well deer it depends hunting. are you how good of a shot are you because well, how good if, of a shot is my drone yeah because if you're a good shot they're not going to pick up on it at all because they should just that should be it yeah 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 but i mean how much how do you think word gets around the squirrel community like hey did you hear about nuts now what happened to nuts he's up there at the bird feeder we never seen them no more really yeah, nuts went bolts you know nuts went bolts yeah um so anyway i don't know what i'm gonna get my mom but the pressure is on but now with, with that with the bird feeder thing now if you do set up a booby trap for squirrels you then need to set up another camera pointed at the camera so that you could see all the activity around the behind the camera all that stuff oh 360 so now, view yeah so now you got two cameras rolling and you're getting double the notifications oh uh, that's so. true that is true. That might be too many notifications. I might end up muting those. And then I'm going to miss the birds. Or you could just welcome the squirrels and uh, I think let that's them go true. nuts. You know? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever eaten squirrel? I uh, don't think I have, actually. Have you? It's good, yeah. Is it, I imagine it's a very lean meat. Yeah, it's actually not that good. I, just... uh, it's, I imagine it's very stringy as well. Kind of a <laughs> stringy, lean meat. Yeah, it's a little, a little gamey. Depending yeah. on the squirrel and what the squirrel is That's a good eat. way to put it. But it's very gamey. Very gamey. Unless the squirrel is eating some nice bird seed, a, a lot of it, you know, if it's a, a seed-fed uh, squirrel. Yeah. You know, if it's getting the, the proper fatty nuts in it, yeah, <laughs> then uh, that makes for some good meat. I think we should start using gamey more. I think that that could be applied to many situations, you know? Uh, yeah. It's like uh, when you're... Let's say you get your mom's a birthday or a Mother's Day present. She doesn't necessarily love it. Uh -huh. You just go, oh, no, no. It's it's not a bad present. It's just a gamey present. Yeah. It's you just know? a little gamey. It, it's a little gamey. You just have to maybe pick around some stuff. and uh, It's wild. You know, if you just wash it down with something, it's good. <laughs> if you wash it down with the other gifts that you got, it doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. And that Hey boss, I didn't I didn't not get my job done. I just I'm just it's a little gamey. My the the, the report I gave you is just gamey. I don't think this is going to get you very far, but I do kind of like where you're going with it. We could hey, we'll workshop. We'll it. workshop it. That sounds good. You just got to you got to know how to prepare it. Yeah. You know? It's not gamey. You just have to know how to prepare it. <laughs> there you it's, go. It's not your fault. It's their fault for not preparing your, uh, yeah, or, your TPS report. Or it's just uh, you haven't acquired the taste. Uh, ah, yeah, Hey, yeah, my yeah. report, boss. My report wasn't bad. You just haven't you just haven't acquired the taste for it. <laughs> Could be a good one. I haven't acquired the taste for squirrel. I'd look forward to acquiring that taste. Yeah, yeah, it is an acquired that taste. gamey meat. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I'll I'll prepare you some. Okay. Yeah. That sounds, sounds good. good. All Should right. Should we get some to get into some callers? Yeah, because we've already disappointed our moms and squirrel lovers out there. So Guys, I no one tell my mom that I don't remember what's on her list. Appreciate that. And nobody tell the squirrels that I'm not actually going to shoot them. No, you don't have the heart to do it, I don't think. No. I mean, in the wild, but not when they come up to your bird feeder. Yeah. That's not nice. I will put a, a slinky on there. And I'll let them stretch my slinky. That was the worst part as a kid growing up. You know, when someone would stretch your slinky, gah! Mine would just get tangled. I, nothing was getting stretched. Uh, that's why they called them old Miles Tangles. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, should we get into some callers, Charlie? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Let's do that. It's about that time. Welcome hey. to the Belly It Up podcast. Who do we got on the line? This is Isaac. How you guys doing? Good, Isaac. Yeah, we're doing great, actually. Yourself? I, you know, I'm doing all right. Beautiful weather out here. Just uh, another day in paradise. Nothing, nothing to complain about. Where, where are you guys at today? We are in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Metro area, yeah. 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 We're, We're bellied up at uh, Tony Jaro's. 
the in river the, in the river garden garden <laughs> yeah yep so uh that's where we're at yeah why don't you belly up to the bar with us tell us what's on your mind yeah well you know pre- appreciate you guys taking the call so you know I, I i've been struggling lately i recently moved up north to, was out of west texas and came up to uh eastern colorado oh. and um <laughs> up north <laughs> eastern like, colorado is your that, up north that's much much further south for us so <laughs> oh fair, fair enough fair enough it's you know it's all relative to yep. me it's you know significantly the idea that we have snow more than one day a year kind of threw me off you know yeah, yeah so, that's a you. culture shock <laughs> if right? anything oh yeah absolutely well there's a lot of hippies up here which no, nothing wrong with that but it's a lot of hippies yeah so quite a bit of fishing and I need some help. I've always been, you know, I've seen you guys give some, heard of you guys giving some advice, dating advice in terms of fishing. And I've always been pretty, you know, pretty decent with the ladies, but um, need some fishing advice. And maybe if you could give it to me in terms of things that I would understand talking to women for the most part, because I'll tell you what, for the life of me, I can't catch anything but a damn stock trout. Excuse me, language, just stock trout, because, you know, I really would like to catch a walleye or a pike at some day. Okay. Well, first of all, let's unpack this a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm confused. There's not a lot of people running around going, you know what? I absolutely destroy with the ladies, but not so much in the fishing realm. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. So I'm confused. Is this describe, an analogy? I don't, I don't know, but can you describe to us what you mean by you're really good with the ladies? Does that mean that you got like eight girlfriends running around or what, what does that mean? Oh. You know, I'd say if there's something I see out there that I like, <laughs> I'd give myself a 80% chance of closing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it works 60% you know, of the I'm, time, I'm, every time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'll, you know, I've got friends that let's say they're 50, 30s, and maybe I don't have good friends. Maybe my friends aren't real good at talking. But I find, relatively speaking, I'm more successful than I am less successful. Okay. <laughs> And confident and humble as well. I see. <laughs> now let me well, ask right you right. this. So uh, how did you? How do we get to this point, though? How do? You, so are you? I mean, you're clear. How old are you? You seem to have no want to settle down whatsoever. So tell me a little bit about how we got here. How old are you? Like, what's your life situation that you're just running around yeah. trying to pick up all the ladies, catch and release. There you go. Well, I wouldn't say I'm going to catch. I've actually been in the last, let's say, four months, five months, actually, five months to be exact, found quite the uh, quite the keeper, I would say. Oh, and, okay. Um, you know, I yeah, see. I've been thinking about settling down, which is where the fishing has come from, you know, the interest at least. Okay. So, okay. This is good. This is, I'm glad we asked that question because he is in the life stance where, life spot where, You know, he was Van Wilder just running around town, just trying to pick up chicks. Now he thinks he found the one and he wants to know essentially how to settle down is what this is really about. He's asking about fishing, but he wants to know, Charlie, how do you settle down once you decide that you found the one? Are you his code reader? Are you deciphering his code? Is that exactly? Is that right, Isaac? Did Miles explain it right? Or are you trying to get this gal that you Um, like a lot to go fish? No, no, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm, yeah, yeah, Miles is interpreting the okay. tea leaves properly. Correct? Okay, all right. Take it away, Charlie. Give him some advice on how to settle down. You've done that once. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, you know what? I think it's just taking it uh, a day at a Why am I giving this advice, Miles? <laughs> what? You just got married. Why don't you? Uh, well, no. So he wants to know. He basically is wondering if fishing is the right move to. Is that what settled down people do is what he's wondering. Goldfish, I'm just, are you trying to take this gal fishing? I'm still confused. No, oh, I tried to take her fishing. That did not work. She, uh, she was cold and bored. So and he's basically, not happy. Maybe I meant, I meant, he's oh. wondering if fishing is a good alternative to then going to the bar and picking up chips. Oh, Because yeah. he's now in a committed relationship. Yeah, he can't I do that see. anymore, and that's what his hobby was. That energy's yeah. got to go somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Oh, no. He's got up all this pent-up yeah. sexual energy that he needs to channel somewhere, and he's wondering if he can channel that into the river. Oh, yes, you absolutely can. First of all, a river is a phallic symbol. Okay, if you look at it from an airplane, you know, and as the river flows, so do the 
the juices. Okay. You know? And they can flow. It, it, standing in a river, if you're fly fishing, you stand in a river and, and you just see love is just an energy. Okay. And you can you can get in that river and you can go down that down that way, but you're gonna leave your favorite tree, you know, and you got that beautiful tree sitting right there. So you mm-hmm. can just fish right in front of that tree. Yep. So you can let the river flow all around you. All the other prospects, all the other fish, just kind of let them flow down the river. Okay. Although now this analogy is breaking up because what's he doing in the river if not fishing? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I took it to an analogy. It's not an analogy. He's basically, just to- Charlie, let's call a spade a spade. He's horned up and he wants that adrenaline rush of being horny and he needs to get horny for fishing. Is well, really what I'll it sounds tell you like. This. There's nothing that'll get you, you know, yeah. boom, rock, wood, as soon hard as, as soon as, as, as you get a on trout line, on that line. Oh, my um, God. Wow. And you just I mean, yank it. You yank on it. Yeah. Set the hook. You and then are, you just start reeling. You you're just gonna, start moving that hand. Yeah. You're going to fill your waders pretty fast there, fella. I'll yeah. tell you that. Next thing you know, you pop it out of the water and uh, you're hooting, you're hollering, and you're feeling pretty good. And then there's that post fish catch clarity is what I call it. <laughs> oh. it's, after, it's, you, after you catch that bass or walleye or whatever you're fishing for, you got it, you know, is the boat's a mess. There's water everywhere. There's, you know, fish juices everywhere. There's really a, a calmness and a clarity that comes over you and you really put things in perspective and you go, you know what? This is a great day on the water. But I'm going to go home Mm -hmm. to my lady. Yep. And I'm going to stay true to her is what I really think you're looking for. And pay attention to what you feel in those two minutes, because that's really the only two minutes a a, a fellow can be truly honest with himself. (laughs) Of clarity, yes. Wow. So what do you think? Have you ever experienced that post-catch clarity? Post-catch clarity. You know, um... But when you put it that way, I, I'd say there's definitely been some uh, early mornings that you're kind of like, man, that was a, don't know if I went into the right stream, so to speak. You know, if I went into the right creek looking for, you know, I was out there looking for a brown and all I found were a bunch of catfish. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'll, it's something that I wouldn't say uh, happens all the time, but, you know, I, I'd be lying to you if I said I, you know, only ever caught the beautiful fish in the right streams. You know, I can't say I haven't hopped into the wrong stream every now. But have not say, to say that you, you, those aren't valuable life experiences, you know? Yeah. Now I got a question since being with this gal, uh, let's yeah. for this sake, refer to her as a walleye. Have you happened to catch any Northern or musky while she's been in the boat? You know, I, I can't say I've, oh, no. oh, you know, I've had boy. to, oh, I had to no. let him go. So to speak, <laughs> I'd, I'd be lying if I've seen a couple, couple nice pike swim by. You, and, um, you see oh, them, so you know, he's doing, he's, he's saying that you can look at the menu. You don't have to order is what it's what I think he's trying to say. Did you bring him in the boat? Yeah, the issue is when the when now and then the pike want to jump up into the boat and you know, something I've noticed, tell me if I'm wrong or as much as me, but it seems like the, uh, when you got a walleye in the, in the boat, the other ones seem to be a little bit more attracted to what, you. Know, what are you, uh, yeah, Ryan uh, Gosling? Who is is this uh, Ryan Gosling on the line no, no, that no, you no. just have perch and northern hopping up into the boat constantly? Are you what, what? How hot are you? Yeah, what do you look like? Give us give us the head to tell. How tall are you? Let's right, start with so, that. Man, that's I gotta say that's probably my weakest feature, but. I'm, <laughs> I'm a, uh, He's a short king. I'm a weak. I'm a weak five eleven. I'm a weak five eleven. Okay, you're five eleven. So that day. actually means he's five eight and a half, but six he one in heels. Oof. I like yep. it. Yep. Okay, so yep. five eleven and uh, what? What you got? Brown hair, black hair. What, what are we working with? No hair. Black hair. Jet black hair. Jet black hair. You bald at all? Nope. No. 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 <laughs> no. Gotta say, that's probably where I'm. That and the smile are probably my two strongest attributes, you know. How's your jawline? You know, I, I'd give it a six out of ten. You know, it's definitely better. You know, I've got a better jawline than I do height, but not as good as I do hair. 
If that makes sense. Okay, so it's it's truly the uh, flow, the it's uh, the, flow. the lettuce that's bringing well, hang in on. the women. Hang on, we gotta ask him this. Do you are you working out a lot? You got? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stop doing that. What do you what What's your bench? I do two fifty right now. <laughs> that's that's my first. That is that is fifty. When was the last time you bench pressed two fifty, Charlie? Every day. How do you look in pleated pants? Pleated pants. I can't say I'm familiar with the term pleated pants. I'm yeah, he passed the test. He doesn't so, seem like yeah. someone that would wear pleated pants. Okay. So I don't think he's lying to us. So that's good. I right, think I'll wear a lot of. Uh, yeah, denim for the most part. Okay. Denim. Button oh. ups up top. Okay. So I'm I'm very intrigued. Um, you know. You, we offered some advice to you. Just hey, just be chasing that post catch clarity. Now I want to do a little role play here because you've been talking a lot of game. I want to, I want to see the game in action. Charlie mm-hmm. is a beautiful young woman who is just having fun with the gals. She's out. She's single, smoking hot. Girls are out. Yep, and she just wants to dance at the bar. And you, you and uh. Charlie's a girl name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Charlie. You and Charlie lock eyes from across the bar. <clears throat> mm-hmm. What happens next? Hang on. Hang on. I approach. Oh, so you're, yeah. Oh. Uh, you hey. swim into his street. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hey. Hey. What's your name? No, my name's Isaac. How about yourself? Mm, Charlie. <laughs> Boy, you look like Charlie. a tall drink of water. What are you, six foot one? Don't lie to me. <laughs> Oh, you know, Charlie, I'm I'm too honest with a guy to lie to you. I'm exactly six foot one. How'd you know? Oh, well, you just looked like you were stacked. Um, oh my god, these arms. Wow. Do you wanna maybe just one dance with me? Would that be okay? Just one dance? Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me, what kind of dancer are you, Charlie? I like to do the booty stuff. I like to twerk. <laughs> and I want to twerk all on those jeans have you ever heard of pleated pants you'd look really good in those you know i i enjoy this conversation about my pants here charlie but let's how about we get on the dance floor and see see exactly what this booty stuff's all about okay you charlie failed. charlie do you want to do a shot with us also ask that guy about pleated pants oh my gosh those are my friends over there should we go do a shot with, do you want to just do a shot quick and then i'll go shake my ass all over you on the dance floor you know, I don't. I don't drink Charlie, but I gladly walk over there. Maybe, maybe have myself soda. Oh, you. Shot. Yeah, you don't have to drink. You just. Um, he doesn't drink. What's wrong with him? Is he a serial killer? What's going on? Stop it, guys. He's hot. Look at that hair. Just shut up. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All oh. right. No, come on. Come on over with my friends. It's fine. Um. Oh, I, I can't put a credit card anywhere in this. Would you mind? Would you mind? Do you have a card down? Yeah, we lost our cards. Can he pay for our drinks? We, I, I'm sorry. I know we just met. Would you mind? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me get around for you and the ladies. So. Okay. Oh, he's rich too. That's great because he's kind of short. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm All five right. one. <laughs> I'm six one. Six one. He said five one. one. Did he not? <laughs> All uh, right. Sorry, I was a little. Roll, at the end. Role play was, is over, but you I failed. Thought, yeah, I thought that you were going to have way more game than that, man. No. He d- he did oh, also just bad? let it happen, though. I do like that. He completely let it happen. But where are you going to draw the line at that point? As soon as, I mean, you heard my voice. It's a sexy voice. As soon as you get out there on the dance floor, and it's not going to get any less sexy because, I mean, the, the female Charlie that I was impersonating really knows how to twerk. And now you're in trouble, my friend. Now, now you've got a, a, a musky in the boat. Great. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Oh, oh are we assuming that I'm in a wallet? I mean, you know, I figured. Yeah, I mean, yeah. essentially, though, if we really boil it down, he did fail. He because his answer failed. should have been like, "Hey, sorry, I, I, you know, I'm in a committed relationship right now." But that's what he should have said. That's a good question, though. Is dancing? Is dancing with someone? Well, she was clearly hitting on him, so he knew what he was getting himself yeah. into. Yeah, he, he failed the test. What should he have said, Miles, as a married man? What he should, should he have, have said, said, I'm in a committed relationship, but, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. I'm sure you're a lovely gal. Mm. How do you feel about that, Isaac? Would you have uh, said that? Do you think you could uh, bring those words into the bar with you? Yeah, I guess I could. I guess I could. Is that you know, I figure with the, with the whole... No, but, yeah, fair enough. Wait. 
Now, you're shutting down on us. What's going on? Yeah, I think you gave us an honest answer of how you'd react. And uh, now uh, now it's not, uh, I don't feel like you really believe that. You know, see, this is what, but this is back to where, you know, I've got all this uh, pent up energy, you know, and, and <laughs> this is, I guess, maybe back to where it started. It's gone right. full circle, and maybe I just need to go full fishing a little more. Yeah, and, I think uh, you also that, need to uh, you know? adopt the mentality of the either JJO or have spent some time with our our pal Jill. Do you know either of those? Oh, no, you can't say I'm familiar with. So I one. want you to take your hand and I want you to put it out in front of you, okay? Like you're like you're holding up the number five. <laughs> And then I want you okay. to take your look at, the back of your hand or the front of the look at the back of your hand, and I want you to take your other finger, and I want you to run it down your index finger down into your thumb, and it's going to make a J. Do you see that, Charlie? How was your podcast today? Oh, it was great. Miles was telling a guy how to jerk off on it. Yeah, <laughs> super fun. Well, I'm trying to save his committed relationship. Oh yeah. Okay. okay? Sorry. Do you see the J? I see the J. Okay. Now the I is a yep. little taller for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. The, there's the dot at the top, okay. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that that's the advice I think we should give them. That's fine. But here's another question. What if you find someone, do you think the person you found is the right one for sure? Oh, absolutely. I know it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. You know, it. And, and you really yeah. got to be hanging out with Jill. <laughs> Yeah. If you got, got that much pent up fishing energy, you need yeah. to be yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have to figure you're gonna have to invent a wild imagination, my to, friend. You're gonna have to find how to release in other ways, I think. Yeah, and maybe it is going fishing. You failed that test. I mean, that was me impersonating. Thank God, yeah, thank God this was a test. I think I was just me impersonating it. Like Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what do you think of that advice? You think that that's maybe the the where we start? Go fishing and hang out with Joe. 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 Okay. I'll have to give 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 Joe a try. That, you know that I do appreciate. It, you know, I'll have to send you guys some. We'll send you the wedding invites since his advice has been so positive. Okay. Okay. That's and I won't tell. What's her name? <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't know if I, I don't know if she wants to. Wow. <laughs> that was we'll call her uh, the walleye, the great walleye. We won't tell the walleye about Charlie at the bar. Yeah. How's that sound? That's between us and all of the hey, listeners. You know, I do have a buy seller trade as well. Not to totally shift the subject on that, but I do have a buy seller trade. Is that something y'all y'all still taking? Yeah, sure, absolutely. What are you looking for? A flashlight? <laughs> 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 so I've got I've got two whitewater kayaks in northeastern Colorado. Wait, 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 for wait. A, uh, you can't. <laughs> he bought one for us. He didn't want to go fishing, and he's also <laughs> having second thoughts. <laughs> okay, so you got two whitewater kayaks. Yep, and I, and I need a John boat. Now I've got a motor already, so I just need a. And I don't know how the heck John boats work. I think you have to, you know, the bigger the better. Has been my usually my approach on things. Okay. So, just you know, I'd like to trade for a John boat, but you know, if someone gave me a whole bunch of cash, I'd take that too. Okay, okay. So you got two, and uh, what's the make and model of these uh, kayaks? The Jackson Antex and a Piranha Shiva. Okay, all right. And uh, what's the uh, length of them? Oh, that's that's a good question. The Shiva is a nine footer, and the and the Antex is, uh, I think it's six and a half. Okay, and you're looking for either cash or uh, a John boat. That's perfect. And where can people reach you? Oh, on a, oh boy, that's a good question. <laughs> well, he's not going to tell us any Facebook. personal information because he just <laughs> yeah, basically yeah, said he's Facebook. trying to Facebook. hit on anything with a pulse and he's got <laughs> in a committed relationship. He's, he, this is buy, sell, and trade. He's never going to get it sold because he's well, not going to give anyone yeah, his information. I think he would have if you didn't just say all that, okay? He was ready to. How he said Facebook. Be, just Facebook. Just, just, <laughs> just Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Find the Isaac with two uh, two kayak yeah. in his uh, yeah. profile picture. In the pleated pants. <laughs> uh, ooh, and it, it's you never go, you go, never go see to Whitewater Trader. White Whitewater Trader. You'll see him there. Oh. Okay. Okay. Whitewater yeah, Trader. There you go. Yeah. All right. It's a good way to get hold of me. 
All right. All right, Isaac. Well, we appreciate you calling in, man. We're going to see if we can get that sold for you. Hopefully some of our advice really hits home. And uh, you know what? You're on a path now. You're on a pent up path and just find that catch and release. So thanks for calling in, man. Yeah. Gentlemen, pleasure. Watch out for deer. Watch out for the Charlies at the bar. <laughs> See you, pal. Later. Ooh, that guy is never going to stay married. <laughs> no, I, I would love for to be wrong. I would love to, but it was like, uh, it would be like he would, his natural instinct would just come out and he'd be talking about hitting on girls and with strategy of this. And then we'd be like, but you're in a committed. Re- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. I'm in a committed relationship. He just forgets for a second. He's got two personalities, but know. a very suave fellow. But at least he knows that he kind of has a demon inside of him and he's got trying to figure out how to deal with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That is a tough one to do. You know? Yeah. Uh, that's a tough road to go down. He's going to have to find um, fishing or Jesus or something. <laughs> or maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, he's definitely 5'8". <laughs> good, good guy, though. Great, dude. Uh, the best of luck. He's Like I said, he's on a path. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's take another caller, Charlie. Yeah. Welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who do we have on the line? Yes, sir. This is Nate. How y'all doing today? Nate, we're doing good, man. How are you? Oh man, I'm I'm struggling, man. It's Monday. Yeah. The worst case of the Monday today. Yeah. <laughs> How about y'all? How yeah. y'all Did you up? have the Sunday scaries last night as well? Yeah, yeah. It was pretty bad. I had the yips this morning, so <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living? Well, I'm out here in the in West Texas. I'm over here. Uh, I'm a contract welder. I chase drilling rigs and all that good stuff. Nice. How do you like that work? Been out here for a couple of years already. Ah, uh, to be honest with you, it's it's honest work. <laughs> yeah, it depends a little bit more, but it is what it is. Now so tell me Yeah. Now tell me this. Um, if there's one thing that I know about welders, is they are the Biggest critics of other welders. Is that true? Oh, that's completely true. Hundred percent true. We're, we're biggest. We're the biggest criticizers of other welders, and we judge uh, everybody else as well silently. And the major one, the, the big one, you know that our welders is that we complain a lot <laughs> about everything. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you said to us was, "Hey, it's Monday and this sucks." <laughs> so I believe you. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. So, are, I mean, that being said, welders think that they're better welders than everyone. Would you say that that rings true? Are you the master welder? In, in my eyes and in my book, I'm the master welder, but hell, I don't know. Nowadays, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot of us out here now. <laughs> so, yeah. that go off of hearsay. So, now we got we to gotta kind of swing our weight a little bit and prove it. It's not about running... Saying, oh, I'm the best now. Back then, you used to be able to say, oh, yeah, I'm the best. And, oh, okay. But now it's like, oh, yeah, prove it. Let's run, <laughs> yeah. let's run yeah. some wells. Where's the video? Let's see how yeah. good you are. <laughs> yeah. Now yeah. they, they yeah. want to see your TikTok of your welding. You know, it's a different game yeah. these days. All right. Well, what do you what uh, do you got yeah. on your mind? Well, I got a quick question for y'all. I don't know if y'all are avid golfers, but, man. I need some advice. I got a golfing buddy of mine that, I mean, he's a good friend of mine, but, man, he's a terrible golfer. Oh. I don't know how to cut the news to him. Like, hey, man, you know, <laughs> we're trying to pay for money, but you're kind of screwing me here. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. I, I just don't know how to do it, man. I need yeah. some I need some professional advice here. I don't know if I came to the right place or not. but what? Yeah, so actually, this is great. Because I would also like to break up with one of my golfing buddies because he's really bad. And he hosts a podcast. He's a comedian. <laughs> he, uh, you know, he wears glasses. Um, oh, I see how it is. I see how oh. it is. First of all, he's talking about me, if you haven't figured that out. And oh. I am actually. No, I, I figured it out after. <laughs> I'm a great golfer. I just want to say I think Miles takes to the rules a little bit too much, takes to the um, the um, 
etiquette. BS the etiquette. A, the etiquette. etiquette. Oh, okay. Why don't you find my oh, okay. word? Like you always find my ball, except it's not my ball. It's just a <laughs> random broken up ball by a lawnmower, well, and you sent me it, off into the pay, woods looking pay for it. Pace of play, you know. Pace okay. of play. Pace of play. All right. So you want to know how do you do? You want this guy out of your life or just out of your foursome? <laughs> No, let, let, let's put it this way. I can't I can't be seeing golf with him anymore because, man, I golf with a lot of my clients. So we went out and played for money, and, man, we got whooped on. He told me, yeah, dude, I'm, I, I, I hit the range and this and that. He was ready to go. Man, he went out there. He just – it was just bad. It was a horrible thing. So how much money it did was, he lose you? So, how much money did he lose you? Well, he's a – it wasn't the money. It's just the principle. I mean, if we're going to play for money, we better be on our A game, you know? Like, And this guy had told me, oh, yeah, I hit the range and this and that. And I I mean, I honestly, my and I have to hit the range every single day preparing for that. And I kind of had to carry him that day. Wow. Yeah, we still lost so at that point. But Do you think yeah, he lied I mean, to you? Or do you yeah, think he just got nervous? I think I, I, I was just hoping it was the hits, but we went golfing after that, and it was kind of the same ordeal. Yeah. Same thing. So I was like, yeah, I'm starting to catch on here. So Yeah, you don't get the yips every time, okay? Yeah. I mean, that was the cool way at some no, point. I mean, Charlie's had the yips for 10 years yeah. now, you know? Yeah, proud, proud supporter of the yips, you know? <laughs> I, I'm all about that. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell you I've been practicing. That's one thing I won't ever tell anybody about golf. All right, Charlie. Well, let's give him a couple <laughs> right. strategies that he can do to maybe throw his buddy off the scent that he's trying to get rid of him. Well, still being able to get rid of them. How would, where would you start? Why should we role play it you, as you trying to get rid of me? Or should we just give the. Well, actual- let's start with some some key points here and then maybe we can role play it. For OK. Him. All right. That's fine. So I think the first thing that you want to do is uh, just find an alternative hobby that you two t- can do together. Yeah. Take up. Uh, uh, OK. OK. Pickleball? Ten, pickleball. Pickleball. <laughs> Take up pickleball. You got does he like pickleball? Do you like pickleball? Could you play it for uh You, you know what? I, I've never I've never tried pickleball, but from what I heard he was a really good pickleball player. So I don't know. If he plays pickleball like he plays golf, I, I mean I mean it's gonna Make the ordeal kind of bad. <laughs> That's true. Okay. Maybe let's take athletics out of it. Yes, yeah, smart. Yeah. <laughs> take yep. athletics out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there we go. Yeah. What does you find something that he likes to do that you kind of like to do? Do you have any of those things? Well, we got a, we got a cod, cod league kind of within our friends so that we all do. So that's kind of our thing right there. That, that, I think that might be the way out there. Oh, you got a yeah, card game. Yeah. Cod. Cod. Yeah, we got no. We got a cod. Call, call, call of Duty. Of Duty. Oh, yeah. Call of Duty. Yeah, oh. video games. Video okay. games. Yeah. yeah. Video yeah. games. Yeah. And we get kind of bored out here. We play video games. Okay, I figured <laughs> it out. I figured it out. So what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to tell right, them right. that the squat. You're squatting up at you know Saturday morning. You're squatting up 8 a.m. and he's gonna get in that lobby. He's gonna be waiting for you guys. And all you gotta do because you will have diverted him to playing Call of Duty. You will have made a tea time at 8 a.m. And then when uh, when he's like, hey, where are you at? You just go, oh, my, my internet's being buggy. I, I'm going to try and figure it out. I'm going to go try and reset the router, all that stuff. Meanwhile, you're shooting low on the course, and he just thinks that you're having technical issues, which he can't be mad at you for technical issues. <laughs> I think you're gonna get this caught. Is, I guess the, the nugget of wisdom. Yeah, I was. This is the nugget of wisdom I was looking for. See, I, I knew I called the right place. <laughs> See, <laughs> done. One and done, Charlie. I don't know. I think he's gonna find out at some point, and I think you at least need to mentally prepare for that tough conversation. Yeah. Okay. We can role play the tough conversation. We'll roll, so when he finds out, I do like the Call of Duty, but that's only going to last so long. So, so when the yep. tough conversation happens, this is how you handle it. Okay, I'll be the friend who sucks at golf, and you try and let me down, Charlie. Oh, you want to reverse the roles of yeah. our friendship? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, what's going on? Should we uh, go? Uh, we want to hit the range this weekend and maybe prep up for our big gambling game that we got on Sunday. I got to be honest with you about something. Uh, about oh yeah, go ahead. What is 
past three weeks when I told you I was uh, trying to play Call of Duty with you? Yeah. Do you get that internet thing figured out? I actually called the internet company, and they seemed to know nothing about the issue. There wasn't an internet issue. Did you ever think it was weird I was asking you to play Call of Duty at 8 a.m.? Well, I just, I mean. I was golfing. You're playing PGA 2K no, on the on the. I was on the golf course golfing with clients, and I didn't want to invite you because I hate to say it, but you suck at golf. You said you've been practicing. You clearly haven't been practicing. You've been losing me money, but more importantly, dignity. And further, I'm upset that you lied to me about practicing. <laughs> I know it's gonna be hard. I want to be friends hey, with you. Hey, just. <sighs> This is such a relief because I hate golf and I was just doing oh it because God. I thought that you oh. wanted me to. Oh no. Oh, no. I no. thought that you just wanted I was I hate golf. I know I was ready to beat you over the head with an iron <laughs> and leave you for dead on And the I was about to put concrete <laughs> shoes on and jump in the pond. Oh my god. We could have just done that and solved everything. Wait, what? Oh sorry. I mean <laughs> Um, what do you think? Because that could be an option. Maybe he secretly hates golf. Yeah. And maybe. maybe I, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, we're going to have to give that, that strategy a try because, I mean, like I said, it's, it's like he's a good friend of mine and I still got to see him <laughs> uh, at functions and stuff like that. It's not like, a, it's not like a work buddy. You know, work buddy, you get out the weekend, that's work and that's it, you know, nine to five. But this guy's like one of them. You know, does he have a family? Is he is he married with any kids or anything like that? Uh, no, nah, he's married. I think he's got a family. Yeah. How old? Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> so he's a really he's a really good buddy, but you think he has a family? You're not even. You guys are out, you guys are golfing for God's sake, the most boring sport in the world for how many hours? And you haven't. You would you would think we'd have a conversation? No, well, I mean. From what, from what I know, I, he doesn't have that much of a family, but I mean, you know how people are behind the scenes. I really don't just push the topic of that. It's just like, oh, hey, how you doing this golf? Whatever. How's the family good? How's your family good? And that's about a, how, how far that conversation I goes. I got it. <laughs> I was going to say, if you knew his wife, yeah. you could level with his wife and be like, hey, you got to tell him he can't play golf yeah, anymore. Get, give him a fake ultimatums. It's either <laughs> her or golf. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. And then it backfires. They end up getting divorced because of this. The only other thing I can say is Dude. that you just have you just send him this episode of the podcast and say, "Hey, listen to this. It's really funny, especially the third <laughs> caller." <laughs> <laughs> just see what he says. I think I might have to do that. We'll see how it goes. You could also just have you ever seen the movie Inception? Yes, I have. So you could incept him. So what you could do is <laughs> just start like throwing, like like maybe go out for drinks with him and be watching golf on the TV. And you're like, God, oh, wow. Those guys in the TV are so good at golf. If I was like not even half as good as these guys, I would just hang it up. I wouldn't even play golf. Right. And that's what you say to him. Right. <laughs> and then when he's in a spot, he's like thinking, yeah. okay, well, I'm half as bad. Maybe I should quit too. And you just start saying stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Like I would never be so bad and do that to my friends and make them lose money. Yeah. Ever. Or, or find a different scenario, right? Maybe you guys have a mutual friend yeah. that sucks at another sport and go, man, if I was as bad as Rick at pickleball, I would probably just quit because it's probably making all of his friends feel pretty bad and then see if he realizes that he's also that on the golf course. Just Miles does this with uh, his other podcast and me all the time. He talks about the other podcast and the stuff he wishes they were doing better, <laughs> but he's really talking to me, and I know that. So, so that might be the next strategy, I think, if, if you don't want to just tell him straight to his yeah. face. Just inception route. Just yeah. keep getting well, deep in that brain. Yeah, well, I got some good ideas here. I'm I'm writing them down, boys. So don't you worry about that. I'm going to see right. which one's going to work, and we'll go from there. Well, we appreciate <laughs> you calling in. Another satisfied customer here on the Bellied Up Podcast. We appreciate you, and watch out for deer out All on right, the golf you. course. I appreciate y'all's time. All right, we'll see you soon. I see sure you. will. Thank you all for y'all's time. Y'all stay safe. Hey, yes, sir. thank you. You too now. Gotta love the welders. It, it, yeah, the welders of the world. They're the best. Um, My grandpa was a welder, Grandpa Bob. And he was probably thought everyone else's welds were absolutely oh, shitty, right? Absolute dog shit. Especially, you know, 
someone related to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His kids. He, I, Charlie was getting PTSD when I was talking about welders criticizing other <laughs> welders. He's like, that's my whole childhood. It's also not just, uh, not just welding, you know, it's, uh, uh, cleaning a garage. See my dad and my grandpa back in the day, clean a garage. Why'd you put that there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and the last note on this is yeah. you're only not good at golf, Charlie, cause you never play. I think Thank that you. I want the listeners to know that you you have athletic ability. Thank so it's you. not that. It's just you never play. This might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I know. I'm I'm turning over a new leaf. Yeah, he's a married man now. Yeah, got an, hey, I've been fishing a lot, getting a lot of post catch <laughs> clarity. And that was one of the thoughts I had. And maybe try being a little nicer to Charlie. Ah, well thanks. Yeah. And Miles, I really appreciate that. Yeah. From my Jill to your Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, uh, you know, Mother's Day is coming up, and if you haven't gotten your mom some yet, head on over to the Fleet Farm. They got everything moms want. I'm talking about bird seed, bird feeders, uh, lumber, you know, uh, wood glue. Okay. Hammers. Hammers. Uh, they got boat seats. They got camo uh, hunting stuff. They got shoes. They got a whole bunch of stuff over there at the Fleet Farm, don't they, Miles? Yeah. They have soil. They do have real nice they soil. They have uh, kids' toys. Yep. You can get your uh, niece and nephew something. Yeah, just in case it's their birthday on Mother's Day. Yeah. That yeah. Would be. Or you, in case your mom likes toys. Yeah. Maybe she uh, likes... I don't Nerf know, guns. Legos. Uh, Legos, yeah. <laughs> Check it out, folks, over at the Fleet Farm. You know what, Charlie, what I'm going to do this uh, Mother's Day? What's that, Miles? I am going to get my mother a bottle of Tippy Cow. No kidding. Yeah. What do you think of that? I think I that she would love that. I think and... she will definitely see through that. See, but I think it's a great I think it's a great idea. But I do. I do know that she would love after her Mother's Day dinner. To sit sit down on the couch, kick her feet up, and have an after dinner drink with Tippy Cow. Oh, for sure. I mean, she's gonna love the drink. Oh, I, God, yeah, no doubt about it. She's also gonna know Tippy Cow is she's the gonna sponsor wonder, of your podcast. Yes, but she's, she's also gonna, gonna wonder what's the it. other what's the other you know gift with it. And I'll mm -hmm. say, my love, your love, yeah. Oh, the gift that keeps on giving. What well, what uh, if you were gonna get your mom? Some tippy cow. What gum? flavor do you think you'd go with? You know, I'd go the mint uh, because she is Irish, you yeah. know, but she likes Bailey's. So maybe mix in a little chocolate, chocolate into that. vanilla. I'd maybe, give her two. Maybe. Oh, two bottles. Cause I'm that's a, it. I'm a bear. Mama son. Barons. You don't get, you don't get the full thing. You just get two bottles. What do you mean? The full I'd thing? Get, I'd give my mom all four flavors. Oh, okay. Now you're just one upping me to one up me. Well, I'd get her all the flavors of Tippy Cow and also an actual present that isn't <laughs> sponsored by us and not just something from Fleet Farm as well that I also got for yeah. a 20% okay. discount. No, that makes sense. Well, either way, I think her moms are going to be super happy to get some Tippy Cow on Mother's Day. <laughs> Don't you think? I think so. So, guys, tip I on hope, back. Yep. Hope you tip a few back with your mom on Mother's Day and. Do it with Tippy Cow. Guys, if you're interested in having Charlie and I belly on up to your local bar, we have a submission form where you can submit your bar to uh, have us come and do our podcast there. And all you got to do is go to our Instagram page at bellied up pod. And the link is in the bio. Welcome to the Cripes cast. Who we got on the line? This is not the Cripes cast. Charlie. Welcome to the Belly Up podcast. Who we got on the line? <laughs> you got Curtis from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, PA. Scranton, what? The Electric City. The Electric Sc City. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Scranton, what? <laughs> the Electric City. Okay. I always had a so dream. I always had a dream. If I, I always thought if I met someone from Scranton, PA, I would do that to them and see what happens. Right? It's like uh, you go to Missouri and you go M I Z. They go. Oh, you are. How do you spell it? Z O U. <laughs> he, Charlie's never been to Missouri, right? You go to, saying. Uh, you go to Iowa City and you go, let's go Hawks, and they go, let's go Hawks, right back in your face. Yeah, that's another one, Charlie, that they do. Yeah, that exactly. With. Um, um, you know, you, you say, go Rock um, Chalk, and they go Jayhawk. 
In uh, in and Madison, uh, one side of the stadium says "eat shit," and the other side says "fuck you." <laughs> <They're> exactly <laughs> the same. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, Mister First. What's your first name? Uh, Curtis. Oh yeah, Curtis from Scranton, PA. Why don't you belly up to the bar with us? Tell us what's on your mind. Well, I would love to belly on up. So, being that I am from Scranton, home of the infamous TV show that my absolutely love mild directed towards you who would you say in your opinion is your favorite character from the office okay um you know what you know what actually kind of irks me about office fans is everyone thinks that creed is funnier than he is if I'm being honest, oh, I think a lot I of, agree with you 100. percent He's overrated. He's overrated. A lot of his jokes are forced. Um, all that. I think Pam Beasley is one of the worst Office characters of all time. Frustrating, really. really? Yeah. Wow. Pam, these are some. Wow, these are takes. some hot takes. After you office. watch through the Office like ten times, like I have, you absolutely begin to despise Jim and Pam's relationship. You just you're not you're not watching the show for the relationship anymore. Just feed me. Is that because you're jealous of it, Miles, or you just don't like it? Ooh. Uh, wow. no, I'm in a pretty happy, committed relationship, so that has nothing to do with that. It's more so. Um, it's more frustrating than anything because they could have just had like two conversations, and they could have just she could have broke up with Roy, and they could have got together. You don't understand, Miles. I completely disagree with you because you needed that sort of sexual tension. The will they, won't they? You get kind of plenty of sexual season, tension between man. Michael and Jan. Yeah, though. it's a different. That's that's <laughs> that is the funny sexual tension. You need the grounded se- sexual tension for the people who are watching the show as like an a, an you know an actual yeah. human being. For, yeah. For yeah, the yeah. people with emotions watching the show. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think uh, Todd Packer is an underrated character. Todd Packer's great. Um, yeah. I think that actually the most interesting character throughout the whole thing who actually one season you love him, next season you hate him, it goes back and forth, is Andy Bernard. Um, I think he's a good mm. dynamic character. But at the end of the day, the only reason why The Office is what it is because Michael Scott and Steve Corral did a character that's like none other on the on the on the tube and the comedic timing, the absolute annoyance that Michael Scott is. So what makes the whole show it's an obvious answer, but I mean, there's no show without. I that. mean, it's a fantastic point. Yeah. If it, without him, it doesn't happen. Now, do you say Todd Packer because he was on the Cripes cast? Is that why you said that? Oh. Yeah, that is actually exactly yeah. why I said that. It wasn't because I was totally spacing out at the beginning of this call. <laughs> also, I do have He's a like, question. Oh, yeah, I did have him on the Cripes cast. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a question, though. What about the British uh, office? What about that? Can't you do? Can I only saw like the pilot episode, and yeah, I really don't have a too much of an opinion on it. But I mean, I think the American version just took it to a whole another level. But the first one isn't too bad from what I saw. Miles, did yeah, you ever I, dive into that? No, I'd say it's a fair assessment. I didn't really dive too heavy into it. Okay, okay. but uh, so I'm curious, as someone from Scranton, PA. What do you genuinely think about The Office? I genuinely think, I mean, the city's not as nice as it makes it seem. I'll be completely honest. You mean there's did not they, palm uh, trees there? Did, did they make it seem nice? No, definitely the show? not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for yeah, we definitely don't have palm trees. It's the beginning of May, and we're not even out of the 40-degree mark yet, so we definitely don't have palm trees. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it gives the city a little bit too much hype, if I'm being honest. I mean, the Poor Richard's Pub, though, the real one's actually in a bowling alley compared to what they show on the show. So let me ask you, does it bother you being from Scranton to watch The Office and in the driving scenes see the palm trees? Uh, it, it does a little bit because it makes me a little jealous and I wish I was in a warmer climate. But... So, so you're not mad at like <laughs> the people of the office for not actually shooting it in Scranton. You're just mad that Scranton isn't a nicer, uh, a better climate for you. 
Yeah, I would say it's 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 made seem like it's taking place in Florida, which is nowhere near what it's actually like in Scranton. So, got it, got it. And uh, how would you say the city of Scranton has sort of responded to uh, the office? Has it been a net positive? Has there been any negative uh, for it? I think it's been a pretty big positive. I think it gives them a little bit too much, a little bit too cocky. They're getting this big <laughs> head because they're like, wow, this amazing show is based here. Like I remember when they did their wrap up party, they did it at the minor league baseball team ballpark here. And like that place was literally like lined up. Like you had to wait like three hours to get in. It was crazy. Wow, I love that. I actually really like that for, it makes me feel better about the show that the actual people of Scranton PA genuinely enjoy it being i'm sure there's some people that don't but the genuinely love that that's where it took place I yeah i like that kind of puts uh puts it on the map right yeah absolutely i mean i can't go to walk in with somewhere where someone's not wearing an office t-shirt i mean i have a few of my own of course but that is wild to me yeah because it's like sometimes you know the communities are like oh yeah like i live in fargo right and i like when everyone's like oh fargo just like the movie and i'm like ah, oh, yeah same old shit but it sounds like you guys are like, yeah. yeah, the office. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I was. That was what I was kind of getting at, because like Fargo does not have a great, um, you know, uh, response with the movie or the TV show. Whenever I brought it up to it's, people there, it's, it's just like, like a whatever thing, at least to me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually never seen the show. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I live it every day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Bodies in the trunk. <laughs> so oh, what would you say is the number one thing about Scran PA that they got wrong on the office? That they got wrong. Well, besides the palm trees, there's also the scene where Michael talks about Lake Scranton being the seventh largest indigenous body of water. That's not right. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? I think we all thought that that was pure fact. You know, Michael Scott's always whipping yeah. out facts. <laughs> yeah, well, I think a lot of people in Scranton that think that that's a fact when they watch it and then they tell people about it. And then the people that have actually lived there for a long time are like, no, where did you hear that? That's hearsay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? <laughs> Uh, they got like um, all of the, I will say, the proposing to someone at a gas station is definitely something someone from Scranton would do. <laughs> so that I feel like fits pretty, pretty well. Um, what else? I mean, they got the colleges are actually, they, they talk about some of the universities in the, in the show. My best friend actually goes to Scranton University. Okay. So they got some of that stuff right. And so, yeah, I mean, overall, I'd say it's 50-50. It's 50 50. So half of the show is incorrect. I would say how they portray Scranton. Yeah. Half the show would be incorrect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good information. I wouldn't have known unless I talked to someone who lives there. Yeah. It's great to get a, you know, an eye on the ground, uh, feet, uh, boots on the ground in Scranton. Yeah. Get the real deal. Thanks um, for, uh, how do you, well, here's another hotly debated thing on everyone thinks that they want a reboot of the office, right? I am actually someone who is very against ever rebooting the office because it just seems like it would be forcing it. What's your take? Do you think that they mm -hmm. should reboot the office? I, I don't think so. I agree with you, Miles. I mean, the way it ended, the, the last couple seasons are a little uh, rough to get through. And even if you were to get Steve Carell back, it's still, like you said, it's forcing it. It's forcing it. Yeah. Well, never put it past Hollywood to uh, reduce, reuse, recycle a, a story. That is you true. Know? That it's, is true, Charlie. It's probably coming back whether you fellas want it to or not. Um, but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Hell yeah. Well, That's we, right. we appreciate you calling in and uh, giving us a little behind yeah, the scenes. Thank you guys for that. answering. It was awesome getting to talk to you. Heck yeah, man. Great chit chatting. Uh, last question. Well, if I ever find myself in Scranton, PA, what do I got to do? Give me the three things I got to do while I'm there. The three things you got to do while you're there. Well, I'm a little bit biased, but you should go bowling because that's where Poor Richard's Pub is, Old Poor Richard's Pub. So you can go bowling and then go to Poor Richard's Pub from the show. Then you can go to the, you could go to it if you come during baseball season, 
you got to go to a rail riders baseball game. It's a great because name. if you want to talk to people about the what's up, Charlie. No, I'm just saying rail riders. Rail riders is, is, is a great name. It's a great name. Yeah, they had actually the, they renamed the team because it's the Yankees farm system, and they had a uh, fans vote on it, and we got the rail riders. So that's where where we ended up. And number three, hmm, that's a great question. I wouldn't go to Lake Scranton, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Miles. But it's the have, seventh have indigenous. You heard, have you had. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Have you ever had a Krispy Kreme donut? We used to have a Krispy Kreme donut shop in Fargo, and now it's a mattress store. So, super. Oh, lame. that is awful. Well, here's the thing, though. <laughs> If you ever come to Fargo, you got to have a Sandy's donut and you'll forget all about Krispy Kremes because literally a local shop Ooh. called Sandy's Donuts ran Krispy Kreme out of town. Are those quite ones literally. at your wedding? Yeah. Oh, those I had them so at my good. wedding. They ran them out of town. Wow. I took a box home. Hope that was okay. Well, that's instant. I would say there you go. donuts are good anywhere you get them, in my opinion. Whoa. If you're a guy like me, just I like that. He's totally down. Midwest. He's totally, he's just like, I just shit on Krispy Kreme. And he's like, well, yeah, no, I could totally see that perspective too, man. <laughs> just the, the, avoiding the conflict. Well, on he it. also said in a nice way that donuts are well, great. Well, so, so is the Krispy Kreme in, in Scranton, is it have the wall of glaze that goes over the donuts? Yes, you can stand there and stare at it as long as you want. See, they distract you of the quality of the donut a little bit. It's a little bit the experience that you love more than I think you love the donut. Because I remember as a kid walking into that Krispy Kreme and seeing that wall of glaze being drizzled over the top of the donuts and thinking, this is Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory in real life in donut form. And then after a few times going there, the luster wears our, yeah, it starts to lose its luster a little bit. And you realize that this donut just is a little inferior to Sandy's in Fargo. So. Oh, all right. Well, I would (laughs) say you got me there. It's it's a lot of the experience. You're there for like looking at the wall of donuts and watching it go through. So it is the experience is a big part of it. I just want to let you know, I've watched Miles talk passionately about a lot of things on this podcast, but maybe (laughs) nothing more passionate than Sandy's Donuts. I'm a a Sandy's guy through and through. Yeah, I actually did have a Krispy Kreme cake as a kid. So my mom just literally bought a box of Krispy Kreme donuts and stacked them up in a pyramid and put candles in it. So I've been around the block in the donut game a little bit, as you can probably tell. But hey, he had a salad for lunch, (laughs) though. I'll tell you that. Yeah, too many, too many Krispy Kremes and Sandy's. And now later in life, you got to start eating salads. Yeah, he inhaled it, too. I think he's got a piece of... Oh, God. Thanks for that advice. I'll start early now then. That way it doesn't go too far downhill. All right. All right. Yeah, there you go. Well, man, thanks for calling in. And uh, as always, Scranton, what? <laughs> the Electric City. There he is. I love it. <laughs> thanks for calling in, man. <laughs> thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Have you. a good rest of your day. All right. We'll see you. Have fun, Scranton. I just love the pause between when you say it because like, you know he's hyping himself <laughs> up to like give the thing yeah. or is that a delay i think it might just be the phone delay oh. a little bit yeah um did i wake up this morning and think i was going to start a fight with that guy about Krispy cream donuts no <laughs> <laughs> but here we are he's doing a michael scott impression <laughs> of the donuts yeah. that's straight up something michael scott yeah. would say yeah it was like I, and it sucks because that guy was the nicest guy ever, but I had to make sure that he knew. Yeah, you went to town on that, man. Yeah. You really went to town. I well, saw like veins. I think it's also like pent up aggression that I can't eat as many donuts as I used to, you know, now that that really goes to my hips. Oh, yeah. Do they? Do they go to your hips? No, I go straight to my gut. Oh, yeah. But yeah. hey, I'm figuring okay. it out. Well, right. Charlie, I think that that was another successful episode of the Bellied Up podcast. Miles, what do you think? This was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with you. The Mother's Day episode. Yeah. I'm going to get my mom a donut as well. <laughs> okay. For I'm Mother's Day. Make her a donut cake. Yeah. A Sandy's donut cake. Yeah. That, that actually would be fire. It's actually a great idea. Yeah. I'll send you some in the mail. Yeah. Send me enough to make my mom one. Okay. So, yeah. That sounds good. And not a sponsor either. No, we just put them on the map. Yeah. 
There you have it. They need the recognition they deserve. Well, Miles, it's been a pleasure. Until next time, you take care, okay, pal? Okay, dare guy. You watch out for them deers, dare guy. Okay, and tell your folks I says hi. Tell your mom I says happy Mother's Day. Mom, happy Mother's Day. And all of you out there, tell your moms I says happy Mother's Day. As always, don't forget to tip your bartender. Don't you dare. Cheers. Bye-bye.